Hi everyone and welcome to Who Threw the Curve and this is a Robert Ruiz rant. Today we will be talking about guns, glory, and the occasional misfire, a sardonic salute to the Second Amendment. In the grand star-spangled tapestry of American tradition, there lies a thread that has been pulled, twisted, and occasionally used to tie a metaphorical noose around the Statue of Liberty's torch. I speak, of course, of the Second Amendment. The constitutional celebrity that's more polarizing than a magnet in a room full of compasses. To hold a stance on the Second Amendment is to walk into a mother of all Thanksgiving dinner arguments, armed with nothing but your wits and, well, possibly a small arsenal. In the red corner, we have the diehard Second Amendment enthusiasts. Those who clutch their rifles tighter than a bald eagle gripping a cheeseburger. They'll tell you that guns are as American as an apple pie. Assuming that pie was served with a side of ammunition and the right to bear it. In the blue corner, we have the advocates for stricter gun control, who view the Second Amendment with the same enthusiasm as receiving a root canal from an unlicensed dentist. They argue a well-regulated militia in the 21st century looks less like a band of Minutemen and more like a guy with a 47 assault rifles preparing for the zombie apocalypse. So where do I stand? Hmm, dear listener, I stand in the midst of the chaos, popcorn in hand, watching the never-ending tennis match of constitutional interpretation. The founding fathers, in their powdered wigs and breeches, could scarcely say, or should I say have imagined, their words would lead to debates between people wearing camouflage and those donning guns don't kill people, toddlers with guns kill people t-shirts. Let's be honest, the Second Amendment is about as clear as a foggy day in San Francisco. The right to bear arms. Sure, but does that include the right to own a semi-automatic weapon that can make Swiss cheese out of a concrete wall? Or does it simply guarantee the right to bear actual bare arms on your mantelpiece as a frightful conversation starter? To those who argue that every man, woman, child, and their pet poodle should have a gun, I raise my half-empty glass to your optimism. And to those who believe in the abolition of all things ballistic, I salute your utopian dreams. After all, who needs firearms when you can protect your homestead with a sternly worded note and the world's most aggressive home security system, a flock of disgruntled Canada geese. In the end, a Second Amendment remains America's favorite constitutional enigma, whether you see it as the guardian of freedoms or the harringer of doom. One thing is certain, it will continue to provide ample material for comedians, commentators, and the occasional essayist who finds himself trying to diffuse the tension with, with a joke about arm bearers. So, Let us raise our muskets or our post-test signs to the Second Amendment. May its word be forever scrutinized, debated, and lovingly mocked by generations of Americans to come. And may we eventually find a middle ground, somewhere between pry it from my cold, dead hands and turn them all into modern art installations. Until then, keep your wits sharp, your powder dry, or at least invest in a good set of earplugs. The debate is loud. And it shows no sounds, or should I say, no signs of silencing. Thank you for listening to Who Threw the Curve. Don't forget to share and like us. Thank you.